It had been four years since I last saw my ex-wife. Unchanged and beautiful as ever, she appeared in the cafe. Upon taking her seat, she fixed her gaze on me and revealed why she'd asked to see me today. I was at a loss for words. After all, I hadn't even expected that this could happen. Please, we might still have a chance, won't you give it another try? Her words, suggesting we still might have time, resonated deep within me. Could we really make it in time? I had no idea if trying again would work. However, I'd always regretted leaving my ex-wife, not being able to empathize with her feelings. I knew I'd certainly regret it if I pushed her away now. All right, let's give it a shot. And so, the time started ticking again for the two of us. My name is Jeff Johnson. I'm 28 years old. I've been working at a securities firm since graduating from college. This job where big money moves, initially the pressure was so great that I thought about quitting many times. But I kept questioning myself, wondering if I was only capable of this much, and somehow managed to keep going. Now, at the age of 28, I've become what they call an ace in the firm. Once I've made it this far, my ambition for my job kept growing. I wanted to improve my performance further and get promoted. I wanted to prove to everyone that I'm capable of more than they see. Even when I'm not at work, I've found myself thinking about it. The time I've spent with my wife, whom I married at 26, named Hannah, was gradually decreasing. Hannah, a stay-at-home wife, handled all household chores perfectly providing well-balanced meals. She was a great wife. Since we were childhood friends, we've been together for more than 20 years now. Her father was a benefactor in my life. Hannah's father used to teach children martial arts at a local gym. I had been attending it since I was in elementary school. My own father passed away when I was in the third grade. My parents were estranged from our relatives so it was just my mom and me after that. But my mom was often bedridden due to the shock of losing my father. I was still a child, and without any relatives to turn to, I didn't know what to do and felt completely lost. It was then that Hannah's father, a man named George, came to our rescue. George had lost his wife and was raising Hannah on his own. Perhaps it was because of that, he understood how my mother, who had just become a single parent, might be feeling. He explained this to me with a kind voice. He really helped us out by calling the insurance company, my mother's employer, and the people at the municipal office, even asking them to help with some administrative procedures. There were also times when he took me in and let me stay over at his place. Thanks to George stepping in, my mother was able to rest she gradually recovered. It was around that time. That's when Hannah stopped being just the daughter of the instructor. Hannah and George became like family to me. When I, now an adult, went to George to tell him that I wanted to marry Hannah, he was overjoyed. Jeff, I've always considered you as a son. I'm so happy to know that you'll truly be my son now. I think I'll never forget how he told me this with a smile. I was supposed to have had a happy marriage, blessed by my benefactor, but I ended up divorcing Hannah. It was all my fault. Hannah was always concerned about my health and tried to cherish our time together. Are you all right? Shouldn't you take a break? How about we go to a spa together next time? Let's relax. I thought we were kind childhood friends when we first got married, but I somehow came to find it bothersome to have Hannah worry about me. My desire to succeed at work was so strong that I was taking her kindness for granted. Shut up. You wouldn't understand. This is a crucial time for me. Don't bother me. I kept saying such things. Hannah might have looked hurt, but I wouldn't have noticed. It had been a long time since I had actually looked at Hannah, as I was always throwing harsh words at her. 
Then one day, Hannah said to me, I want to spend this weekend together. It's an important day. Please come home early. I have something to talk about, about dad. Could I tell you in detail then? Oh, got it. I'll come home early. At that moment, I simply responded, got it, without confirming what she meant by important day or asking about what happened to George. I suppose I had developed a bad habit of mindlessly responding to Hannah's words. So, as I often did, I casually replied to Hannah, and sure enough, I forgot my promise to come home early and ended up working overtime on the weekend. The only message I sent to Hannah was, working late, don't need dinner. I didn't even mention the promise because I had completely forgotten about it. Hannah usually replies right away, but not this time. But I didn't care about that either. I was solely focused on the work in front of me. When I returned home after midnight, Hannah was already gone. There was a short note and completed divorce papers left behind. The note read, I wanted more family time, but your important thing is your job. Good luck with your work. Please take care of your health. Reading it, I finally remembered the promise I made with Hannah. Glancing at the calendar, I noticed it was marked as my birthday. The important day for Hannah was neither our anniversary or Hannah's birthday. It was my birthday that Hannah considered an important day. Hannah's birthday was a month before mine, but I don't remember ever celebrating it. Hannah was planning to celebrate the birthday of a husband who couldn't even remember his wife's birthday. Looking around the house, Hannah's belongings were gone. I didn't think she could move everything out in a single day. Perhaps Hannah was expecting me not to keep the promise and had been gradually moving her things out. But I hadn't even noticed that Hannah's belongings were starting to disappear from the house. By the time I noticed, Hannah and her things were already gone. Hannah didn't ask for alimony. It must have been a tough marriage for her. I believe she had the right to ask for it. But Hannah didn't demand anything from me. Instead, she left the house, leaving behind a note with words of concern for me. I couldn't chase after Hannah. I filled out the divorce papers and submitted them the next day. In the end, I couldn't listen to what George wanted to say, the talk Hannah had mentioned. I told George about the divorce over the phone. I didn't have the courage to face him. I apologized for not taking care of Hannah. George didn't sound angry or sad. He simply said, I understand. The call ended there, and we haven't spoken since. Because of my selfish actions, I lost both my wife and benefactor in an instant. I was a wreck after the divorce. I had no motivation, started missing work, and eventually quit my job. I was left with nothing, as my life had been all about work. I tried getting jobs a few times, but I'd always end up missing work and wouldn't last long. Now, I'm just getting by with day labor, I've been living like this for four years. I've turned 32. Here I am now, waiting for Hannah at a coffee shop. I received a call from Hannah a few days ago. There's someone I want you to meet. I know you must be thinking, what is she? The one who gave the divorce papers, saying but. No, I'm the one to blame for the divorce. Hannah, you did nothing wrong. No, that's not true. Could you just meet once? There's someone I really want you to meet. Someone you want to meet. Someone I know. You know him, but also you don't. I didn't understand what she meant, but I decided to meet him. I've always wanted to apologize to Hannah directly. This might be my last chance. The old-fashioned door chime of the coffee shop rang. As I turned towards the entrance, there were Hannah and her father, George, when I gave a small wave as a sign, Hannah came over. The person she wanted me to meet was George. I was curious about what kind of person he would be. As she said, you know them, but also, you don't. Hannah still looked as beautiful as ever. 
It was a stark contrast to how worn out I've become in the past four years. Jeff, it's been a while. You look like you've lost some weight. Is work keeping you busy? I know, I quit my old job. What? Oh, I see. Hearing that I had quit my job, Hannah kindly did not ask me for details, as if she had guessed what was going on. Miss, who is this gentleman over here? For a moment, I didn't understand who was speaking. The only person in front of me was George. But for him to refer to Hannah as Miss and me as who is this gentleman, even though we've known each other since we were kids, there's no way he would forget. He is not the kind of person who goes around deliberately saying things the wrong way. That's why I was so puzzled, staring at Hannah. Then, looking down with a sad expression, Hannah said, My dad, you see, he has dementia. Dementia. I'd heard of it, of course, but I didn't fully comprehend it until then. But I felt something was off about George. He had a constant smile on his face. He was always a cheerful person, but he used to have a dignified presence. Now, he just looks like a jolly old man, always grinning. Actually, even before the divorce, I had been noticing that he was becoming more forgetful. After the divorce, signs of dementia began to emerge gradually. Now, there are times when he can't recognize me as he used to. Hannah revealed, with a sigh. So, there were signs before the divorce too. I couldn't hide my shock at the change in my benefactor. Why didn't you tell me? I wanted to, but you were always so busy with work. I thought we could talk about it leisurely at a birthday celebration or something. Right, it was my fault that we didn't have time to talk. I'm sorry, you had to move out your stuff bit by bit, didn't you? Yes, I'm sorry. I couldn't fully trust you. I was moving my belongings into a storage container bit by bit. I thought I could move back home if you kept your promises, but you didn't. You never came home early, so I moved my stuff from the storage container to a studio apartment after the divorce. Perhaps Hannah would still be with me as a family if only I had kept my promises. I felt pathetic for having lost something so precious. I'm truly sorry for those times. After the divorce, I lost my motivation and quit my job. I used to think work was everything. I wasn't really paying attention to you, Hannah. It's okay now. I've also been holding back, not expressing my feelings because I was a housewife. I should have expressed my complaints and demands to you. We used to say anything to each other when we were kids. I wonder when we stopped talking to each other. Hannah's words pierced my heart. We were childhood friends who ended up marrying each other. We had a long-standing relationship. Yet, things still didn't work out. Just because we were childhood friends, just because we were married, I shouldn't have taken communication for granted. I was filled with feelings of regret and remorse. Then, a sudden interruption came. Hannah, Jeff, shall we go to the gym? I've got some candies for you too. George, who had been smiling silently, suddenly suggested. Surprised, Hannah hurriedly explained to me. Dad, you see, his memory fluctuates. He remembers and forgets. But lately, he's been remembering your name, Jeff, and our childhood stories a lot when looking at photo albums. He often gets angry and throws tantrums due to his dementia. But when he remembers you, Jeff, he's very calm. Oh. Is that why you wanted me to meet him today? At my words, Hannah nodded. My father's heart is failing. He's been in and out of the hospital a lot. When a vacancy arises, he will be admitted to a hospital specializing in dementia. But then I won't be able to see him as often as I do now. So, you know, just until he goes into the hospital, why don't you talk to him with me? I want to let him enjoy his memories in a peaceful way, while he can remember. I was at a loss for words at Hannah's sudden proposal. But it's Hannah's wish, and more importantly, if it can make George, my benefactor, can be immersed in his memories peacefully, I wanted to do whatever I could. So, what about you, Jeff and Hannah? Are you guys off to play outside again? You two are always full of energy. 
George, unable to recognize Hannah and me in front of him. But he seemed so happy talking about our childhood. Please, I think we still have time. I'm sorry for the trouble I caused you due to the divorce. I haven't been able to do anything for him. That's why I want to do what I can for my father now. What exactly should I do? Why don't we spend time together again and have tea like this sometimes? Go to the gym. Dad often says he needs to pick up Hannah and Jeff from elementary school, so he might be happy if we take him there. We weren't a good married couple, were we? But we were more like a family when we were kids. I want to recreate those times when the three of us spent time together. I think Dad will remember more if we do that. I want him to enjoy his memories. Hannah sounded very serious. I wonder if I can do it. I failed to cherish Hannah. I'm such a loser. I hope I won't ruin George's memories. That won't happen. Let's try to remember how we felt when we were kids. I'm sure we were considerate of each other. Shall we try again? At Hannah's words, my heart was set. For the next six months until a bed became available in the specialized dementia hospital, I spent as much time as I could with Hannah and George. George would suddenly get angry or zone out. But whenever we opened the photo album, or when Hannah and I visited the places from our memories, he was always calm. There were times when he seemed to recognize us, and others when he didn't. But that didn't really matter. George was able to enjoy his memories. That was enough. Hannah and I talked a lot more than when we were married. Now we laugh about how strange it is that we didn't talk this much when we were married. Six months after I started spending time with George and Hannah, George was admitted to a dementia specialized hospital out of state in Arizona. His heart was weak, so there were no options but the hospital outside of our state. We could visit him, but obviously not as frequently as we used to. On the day of his departure, the facility staff came to pick him up in their car. George, not fully grasping the situation, was smiling while Hannah was in tears. Dad, take care. Despite her call, George just kept smiling without saying anything. But when he got in the car and the staff rolled down the window, after looking at Hannah and me, George said, you two take good care of each other. Those were the same words he said to us when we got married. Whether he recognized us or simply remembered the wedding, we couldn't tell, but Hannah and I answered together, we will, just like we did at the wedding. We waved goodbye until the car carrying George disappeared from sight. A month has passed since George entered the hospital. His condition has been going back and forth. We are planning to visit George together next week. Since then, Hannah and I have been meeting often. We likely share the same feelings of cherishing each other. But that doesn't mean we want to remarry right away. We don't want to repeat the same mistakes. We can be together without getting married. We are searching for a way to stay together while caring for each other. Whether that's as a couple or as a married pair, we are not sure yet but Hannah seems happier now than when we were married. I want to keep this happiness going as long as possible.